Well, I grew up in a musical family. Um, music wasn't really an option. My mother forced us all to play an instrument. I went through guitar, saxophone, you name it, and uh, they reluctantly brought out the drums from storage. And that was seventh grade, and it was over um, at that point. So I got started, I cut my teeth uh, in church. My, my dad's a pastor, so they kind of threw me into the fire, and, and I was grateful to have that opportunity. Joined numerous hardcore, emo, punk, whatever, emotional, angsty teenage bands in high school, um, and then started to take my craft more seriously and uh, got, got lessons from a guy named PJ Garza and then uh, moved on to Rick Lauder who taught me a lot and Mike Johnston. I was very privileged to have studied under these, these guys in Sacramento. At about that time, like 18, I met two very good friends of mine, Cameron Stymist and Curtis Van Winkle. We started a, a band called The Real, which is like a pop rock type thing. And it was in those, that seven or eight years that I learned a ton about the type of drummer I wanted to be. I was around the drum scene and would always kick it with other drummers and kind of felt out of place because I couldn't, I couldn't chop, I couldn't blaze. Um, I couldn't really set fire to the drums in that manner, but I learned that what was most important is, is just maintaining a solid groove and making the, the music feel good. And uh, Cameron really showed me that and he gave me a, 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 like a songwriter's perspective when it comes to music. And that's, that's my niche, that's what I do, that's what I try to enforce um, and, and uh, kind of send to my students um, when I'm teaching. Uh, what I'm doing now is I, uh, I'm playing for a couple different artists in Sacramento, um, James Cavern, and then another band called Trophy, uh, and also an acoustic duo by the name of Inland. Um, so I'm really excited for what's to come with that. When it comes to teaching, one thing I learned from Mike Johnson was just trying to make the instrument approachable. I had studied under guys before where I felt intimidated, I felt like I couldn't hang. I just really try to try to create a, a relaxed environment so that the student can go at, at their own pace because everybody's unique in how fast they evolve or you know just the type of player they want to be. Some people just want an outlet, just want a hobby, and it's important to recognize not everybody wants to be you know the next great American drummer. <laughs> In regards to musical influences, I'll never forget the first time I heard Continuum with Steve Jordan on the drums, just the way that he carved out the perfect path for, for the song and, and the textures and tones that he got were just so tastefully done. So Steve Jordan's a big one. Quest Love, when I heard Voodoo by D'Angelo for the first time, it just blew my mind. Just the, how deep the groove could be and but how minimalistic the playing was. I really love that approach. Um, other guys, uh, Darren King of Mute Math has been a huge, huge influence. Paul Mabry, Benny Greb, Steve Gadd, the list goes on.
I currently play a Ludwig Vistalite kit. Um, it's a vintage kit, acrylic shells, 12 inch high tom, 16 inch low tom, and I have a classic maple right over here, the uh, 14 by eight uh, Ludwig snare. Um, symbol wise, I'm a minor guy. I have a 15 inch extra dry, medium thin hats, 20 inch vintage crash, and a 24 inch traditional ride at home and then a 22 traditional crash to the right. Typically for drum heads, I'll use the uh, coated ambassadors. I use all Yamaha hardware and Promark uh, natural 5As.